Hey everyone, if you clicked on this video, you're looking for the answer to the question, is Siege dying? Here's a simple answer. Maybe. Before we get into more details, I have a few things to say. This is not a video that's just being made to shit on Ubisoft and Siege and call it bad for no reason. This video is more about going over why people are complaining so much. Siege has a lot of positives, it also has a lot of negatives, and that we will go over. And then after that, we will analyze if it is truly dying or not. And before we do that, I just want to say, before any of you say it, no, I am not saying that Siege is dying just to join a bandwagon. That is really stupid. People who think that we content creators complain just to join everyone else are fucking idiots. Why would I, or any other creator, want our most popular game to die and kill our channels, our livelihood, and our income? That is the stupidest fucking thing that I have ever heard of. We want Siege to survive more than anyone else. So when we complain about Siege, it's because we want it to be better. Now with that being said, let's go into first the positives. I will be honest with you, I initially wrote this list by myself, and at the end of the list for both the positives and the negatives, I had three things listed for positives. I had ten listed for negatives. So I went on my stream, and I asked people what they liked and disliked about Siege. So then I got a few more points to add to the list. I'll admit, a lot of them are very simple ones that I completely forgot about just because I'm so used to it, it didn't really spring to mind. But now the list is a little more even. Anyways, positives. The meta is probably the best that it has ever been. Nothing is crazy overpowered, nothing is broken, everything works. And it's consistent. We don't have the horrible rush meta that we had in Chimera. We don't have broken operators that were released like Malusi, Lion, or Ella. Everything has been balanced. Another positive is that we have lots of choices on how we want to play the game. We have a variety of operators, a variety of playlists. If you want to be sweaty and competitive, you can play ranked. If you want to have more fun and still have somewhat of a competitive element, you have unranked. And if you just want to hate your life, you have casual. And we have a lot of different operators to kind of fit whatever you're feeling like doing. However, that does feed into some negatives, which we'll obviously go over in the next category. Next positive is this game has continuous support and updates, which is something that I hadn't really thought about until my community mentioned it to me. This is something that we're pretty lucky to get because not a lot of other games have that. Another thing I want to throw in is that when there are no cheaters, bugs, or exploits, and a game goes you know, how it's intended to be, it is actually incredibly fun, especially with friends. And there's not many other games that compete with that type of feeling of fun. Another strong positive is that the game is completely unique. There is nothing out there that even close to replicates what Siege is. That also comes with a few negatives, which we'll talk about again in the next section. Also, the depth of the game. There are so many interactions and possibilities. A lot of other FPSs are incredibly simple. This does this, this does that, stuff that just really does not need a whole lot of explaining. Siege is so in-depth. There are so many intricacies that we like learn new things every day there are things that i still learn every day while playing the game there is so much to it something else when we're comparing it to other games is that siege has an in-game currency that allows you to buy a lot of things that in other titles would cost only money titles like valorant have absolutely no way to earn anything for free you have to pay for everything meanwhile a lot of the bundles in the shop can be bought with renown or credits I am unsure if this is in the process of being changed though, as none of the recent bundles can be bought with Renown. I don't know if they've just released a bunch of premium only bundles and that's why you know none of them are purchasable by Renown, but I do hope that this is not changing because being able to buy stuff for free is pretty enticing for players. Another strong positive is that Ubisoft as a whole, as well as just stuff in the game, is getting easier to explain. All the new descriptions for the muzzle attachments make sense. You can read it and you know what it does. Players' gadgets are also getting somewhat easier to understand. Instead of having weird interactions like Dokubi can't call Echo, or Zofia has withstand, which makes no sense, instead everything is consistent. Everyone is the same. This makes it a lot easier for new players to learn the game. And the last positive point I want to add, which my community really thought was important to note, is the gunplay feels good, and I can kind of agree with them on this. I'm trying not to compare it to too many other games, but when I play a lot of other FPSs, the gunplay can feel a little weird at times. Siege feels like it's right in that sweet spot of hard to master, but not just so easy for anyone to use. Now, we'll move on to the negatives. 
this was a lot easier for me to flesh out than the positives because there's a lot to say. I did take some of these out and I instead turned them into full categories for later in the video, but there's still a lot of negatives. The first one we'll start with is a super easy one that I'm sure everyone can agree with. Cheaters are at an all time high. This goes for console, mouse, and keyboard. It goes for PC, cheaters, hackers, DDoSers, anything like that on either platform. They seem to be just running completely wild. I'm not sure what happened to North Star to cause so many cheaters to come back, but they are back in full force. And what's more frustrating is that Ubisoft does take a long time to respond to that. I know for a fact that Ubisoft has said they intentionally choose not to ban cheaters until like a month or so after they have been found because they don't want the cheaters to know why they were banned. They say that if they ban a cheater too quickly, then they can change whatever they were doing so they don't get caught so quickly. And while that is somewhat of a valid point, it does make a really bad gameplay experience for everyone who has to deal with these cheaters for so long. Something needs to be done. I don't know if really anything can be done in terms of anti-cheat, but Ubisoft needs to step it up and needs to take action sooner. Moving on to a new negative, we talked about this in the positive section, but it's also negative, is that while the meta is really good, and trust me it is, it is getting stale. It's not as utility heavy as it was two seasons ago, because now that we have floors, we can break a lot of the utility around the map, but it's still very utility based. And trust me, no one likes playing the exact same setup every single time. That gets boring. But if you want to be competitive, you're kind of forced to set up the exact same way each time. Especially because with map bands, we have the same two or three maps being played all the time. There is not as much variety as there once was. And now you can say, well, if you're feeling like stuff is stale, you should just mix it up yourself. And that's valid. You can do that. But if you want to stay a somewhat competitive player and play ranked a lot, you can't. It is just not an option. If I'm tired of going hard breacher, I can't just suddenly swap to Amaru and repel into sight and just see what happens. You're going to lose a lot of games that way. Sure, that might be more fun for some people, but if you want to win ranked and keep ranking up, you just can't do that. So it's great that we have a lot of choices, it's just that because of how ranked and competitive play out, we just can't afford it. Anyways, moving on to the next point. Toxicity seems pretty bad right now. I don't have any numbers to back me up. I don't really have a whole lot of proof, but I can just say as someone who's been playing this game, you know, pretty consistently for the last six years, it feels like toxicity is on a whole new level right now. I'm seeing more and more people every day getting harassed, kicked off games, screamed at. I am very fortunate I don't have to deal with this too much, but it is getting pretty out of hand. Even though I don't deal with it too much, I've definitely noticed an uptick on incredibly toxic behaviors over the last two seasons. And I'm sure a lot of other games have this level of toxicity in them too. I doubt any of them are immune to it, but it is really hurting the Siege audience. People don't want to put up with it. Next point is one that sits very near and dear to me, and I actually got so frustrated when writing this out that I had to write it into a whole new category, which I'll talk about more later in the video. But for now, I'll just add it here as a quick point, is that fixes, buffs, or nerfs take way too long to implement. The average turnaround time for fixing or changing something that Ubisoft wants to do is over a year. Meaning if we have an overpowered operator in the game, it can sometimes take them up to a year to change them, and that is not acceptable. Most other games, again, trying not to compare too much, but most other games, when they have something on this level, usually it's fixed within a month. So taking a year is just asking for disasters. Speaking of taking a long time, we get a lot of features that get teased to us and then are never released or scrapped entirely. Or if they do ever see the light of day, they usually aren't what we expected them to be and they took a lot longer to get here. For example, streamer mode, which we will again talk about more later. Next point we have is about content, which I also made a whole section for later in the video. But the amount of content we are getting per season is incredibly low. 
we used to get two operators plus a new map plus mid-season reinforcements every single season and now we've moved over towards one operator per season and then the map rework is either a casual one like favela a very minor one like border or next season where we get no map rework at all there's just nothing to really get excited about for with each season it's just so little Another negative is that the depth of the game is pretty bad for new players. We talked about it as a positive before, which it is. But for new players, it's incredibly hard to learn and very daunting. The only way you'll ever learn Siege is if you basically make it not a full-time job, but you have to put just about as much time to learn the game. Not many other games require that. This is a crazy new level of depth. Now, a lot of these points moving forward are ones that the community suggested, but ones that I agree with. The first one we'll talk about is playing solo, which most of my community and myself agree is a horrible experience. It's so hard to get people to communicate. It's so hard to get them to not get tilted. And playing as a solo going up against a five stack is just always depression inducing. It's just, there's no fun way about it. It is just horrible. Another negative, which my community mentioned, and I'm surprised I didn't come up with, is that there is not much creator support. The only creator support Siege has is streamer charms, which, you know, I'll say I'm always eternally grateful that Ubisoft gave me a charm and allowed me to make so much money off Twitch with it. It means a lot to me. But that's it. That's all they have. You look at any other content creator for a lot of stuff they play, and almost everything has creator codes now where you can use a creator code when you're buying something from the store and the creator gets a small portion of the profits. And that's something incredibly easy that Ubisoft could set up, but they just don't want to do it. We have talked to them about it. Us content creators have tweeted about it and Ubisoft is just not listening. And as an influencer, like I told you guys, like we need to make money. This is why we're talking about Siege so much is that we're worried about our livelihood. We're worried that Maybe in the next month, Siege is just going to die. Having support systems like this for creators helps us not worry so much because then we don't have to worry about our next paycheck. Now, obviously, if you guys have seen my video about how much money I make, you know I'm not worrying too much. But there are other content creators out there who definitely need to worry. And I fully understand why they're complaining or why they're worried that Siege is going to die. If we had a system like this, maybe that wouldn't happen so much. I'll move on because I am going to get way too deep into this topic. Next point is that the rank system is flawed. This is a point that I primarily agree with, but I'm sure we could come up with a better solution than the one given here. But the main issue is that it's only if you win or lose, not how well you did. So it can be very punishing for a lot of players, especially solo players who get stuck in the lower ranks where they can carry a lot. They can go 12 and 3, but it doesn't matter if your team just sucks, then you're going to lose. And then if you lose, you just lose ELO. There's nothing incentivizing you to keep playing because no matter how well you do, you're just going to lose. It's a super complicated issue. There's absolutely no way that we could even come up with a concept that would be reasonable here. All we can do is just complain because it's just not working. But beyond that with the rank system is this new cap, the 700 MMR cap, which basically stops anyone from playing with any of their friends. A lot of other content creators have mentioned before, it's like playing musical chairs, having to determine, oh, can this account play with this account? No, like move on to the next one, like see which pairs work together. It's way too small of a gap. Or at least the limitations are in place in the wrong locations. 700 MMR cap makes sense for something in silver and below. Because if you're silver one, 700 MMR below you is mid bronze. That's a big difference in skill. But 700 MMR is also smaller than the difference between Plat 3 and Plat 1, which there is not that much of a skill difference between those two. So two friends who are both Plat can't play together. That sucks. Next point we have is about the recycled content. This was a pretty big deal for a lot of people with the Outbreak packs. And I guess if you haven't been playing too much or maybe you missed it, basically Ubisoft released all the packs from Outbreak again. There was no event, there was no announcement about this, it just kind of popped up out of nowhere. And they said, hey, if you want to buy the Outbreak packs again, you can. They didn't discount the price, it was full price, it was about $100 to buy everything. You couldn't buy items directly, you still had to buy the packs, so you had to gamble for everything unless you just bought it all. 
And there was no event or anything tied with it. It was just the packs. That's all they released. Now, I'm not one of those people who's just like, man, don't re-release old skins. Like, it reduces the rarity of it, blah, blah, blah. I don't care about that. I just care more about how lazy it was to just release that content again. Not bring out anything new, just re-release it. Charge full price for it three years after it had already been released. And have nothing alongside with it. It's just lazy money grabbing. I will be honest, that type of stuff does scare me. Because I'm like, why would Ubisoft need to be so money grabby right now? Maybe the game is dying. And maybe they are genuinely worried about it. So they're trying to get whatever money they can before it goes. Or maybe that this was some type of hype up for extraction. And then they just mistimed it or something. And it just kind of looked a bit weird. But it was meant to hype up the new game. I don't know. We could speculate all day. All we know is that the way they executed it was horrible. And they need to definitely fix that in the future. This next one is another one about Ubisoft's decision making and that it's the choices they make don't reflect the stances they took. And the reason I say that is because Ubisoft made a post about how the camouflage skins in the game are an issue and how they're going to address it in the future. That they don't like certain uniforms blending you in with the background and they want to fix it. And then I believe it was the exact same data that they said that they released the new season camouflage skins, which are exactly the same thing. They blend you in with the background perfectly and it is incredibly hard to see people. So if you don't like these uniforms, why are you releasing more of them before you've even implemented a fix? Unfortunately, I don't believe this is what they're trying to do, but unfortunately it does make us think about the previous point is, is this just a money grab from Ubisoft? Do they want to grab whatever money they can before they go? I don't think so, I hope not. But it is a little weird that they say in such a short time of each other, like, hey, we hate these skins, but here's some more. That's either a miscommunication between teams or, I don't know, maybe there is some malicious intent. Who knows? And this next point we'll talk about is one that the community suggested and suggests a lot. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I figured I'd mention it because so many people were complaining. And they were mainly complaining about that alpha packs feel unrewarding. There's so many duplicates. I do agree with that. I do feel like I get way more duplicates than I should, especially since I don't own, I think it's more than 55% of all the skins in the game. I should be receiving a decent amount of new skins compared to duplicates, but I'm not. But at the end of the day, I do think that ultimately alpha packs should just be random and sometimes you get duplicates. But the community really wanted me to add that in. I will say though, one thing I do agree with is that the Twitch packs that you get from watching esports on Twitch suck. There are so many duplicates in them, and it makes no sense as to why there are. And I swear that they are weighted completely different than alpha packs. We have seen so many posts of people who got the exact same skin for one of the weapons or uniforms three or four times in a row. That does not normally happen. There has to be something going on there. My personal theory is that they're trying to make you watch even more esports to inflate their numbers more, but who knows? Maybe their packs are just not working properly. This next topic is another one that uh, I do talk about with a lot of content creators, but the community helped me realize that it is an important issue we talk about is everything gets leaked. Nothing is a surprise anymore, at least for the active members. It is a little harder for me personally to relate to this because I get early access to a lot of things. So I know everything that's happening before you guys do. And then after I get access is when everything gets leaked. I don't know who's leaking it, but it gets leaked. And if you're at all active in the community, whether it's on Reddit, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, anything like that, you are going to find out what the leaks are, even if you don't want to. It happens. I cannot personally remember the last time that we had anything released in game that wasn't leaked. Something needs to be done here. As someone who's been on the inside, I can personally say that a lot of these leaks are probably coming from content creators themselves. I'm sure many of them screenshot or share things with their friends and then their friends share with their other friends and it just spreads like wildfire. It doesn't really help that Ubisoft has also started inviting a lot of content creators who don't have much of a following, so therefore they don't have much to lose. I'm not trying to gatekeep saying only big content creators should be invited and stuff, but you do get a lot more security with that. If you invite just 10 content creators who you know are reputable and don't share the information with anyone else, you're not going to have many leaks. 
but the last time I joined an early access play session, within three hours, everything was posted. I don't know who did it, but people in that play session were posting images on Reddit. So the more they open it up to other people, the more likely we'll get leaks. But that's enough ranting about that one particular topic. We'll move on to the last negative point that we have for this section is that casual is too difficult to play because people leave all the time and it leaves you in a disadvantage or even worse, if you're joining a casual in progress, it leaves you backfilling a match, which is never fun. Never once in the history of Siege has someone joined a casual match and been like, nice, we're down zero to two, let's bring it back. They join that and say, what the fuck am I doing here? I've personally always been a huge advocate that bans should be implemented into casual to prevent people from leaving. I know a lot of people get really upset when I say that, and that's perfectly fine. I just think that if other games like League of Legends, where leaving a casual gets you a ban, can if they can implement that, why can't we? Siege is kind of the same thing. They're decently long games that require coordination and teamwork. Having someone leave never is beneficial and always hurts the team. So why can't we also have casual bans? I'm sure a lot of people would kill me if that ever got implemented, but I personally would be a big advocate for it. Well, that's it for all the negatives. We mentioned so many, and I definitely went way longer than I should have, but there's a lot of stuff to talk about. But now that we have covered the good and the bad, we can actually go forward and analyze the question at hand. The question being, is Siege dying or not? Ultimately, this is something that I think you have to decide for yourself, as no one has the same definition. Me and Bikini even had a conversation on Twitter where he explained that the things that I'm about to show you, to him, indicate a slump rather than the game dying, whereas I interpret them as more as the game dying. So here you can make your own decision. The first one we'll talk about is the player count. Across the board, player count is dropping, and as far as I've seen, it has no signs of recovery. Normally, new seasons bring in a huge influx of players. We're talking anywhere between 15 to 25, sometimes even up to like 40% more players. This season, we got 5%. And not to downplay it, but we still have that bug where sometimes when you close Siege, it doesn't actually close. Meaning this 5% increase that we saw may not actually be legitimate. It may still be based off people not having their games fully closed. And then obviously the only numbers we can see are on Steam, so we don't have the full picture. But we can assume that the Uplay numbers probably follow a pretty similar pattern. And unfortunately, it seems like the game is not doing that great on console. I checked not too long ago and Siege was nowhere on the top 50 games for Xbox. It seems to be there now, so that's good. But if it's jumping back and forth on and off the list of top 50 games, that's concerning. PlayStation, I honestly can't tell. All I could find was this one website where you have to voluntarily sign up by adding the website's account to your friends list, and then it'll track your data for you. But that's not a really good indication of how the community is as a whole. The only thing we can say with absolute certainty is that Siege is not part of the top five games on PlayStation. But again, that doesn't really give us a whole lot of info. This is concerning because the game used to be consistently top of all of the charts, and now it appears to be about half of what it once was. Even something as simple as the Steam charts, Siege would constantly be between somewhere, you know, three to seven. A lot of times when you go to check Steam charts, it's not even in the top 10. So in summary for the player count, it is just objectively low. If we go all the way back to when Siege first launched, it's still up, which is good, but it has a downward trend as of recently. For the next category, we're going to talk about viewership. Viewership numbers for everything are down, and that is a fact. YouTube, from what I can tell, obviously it's hard because I don't have access to all the content creators' data, but from what I can personally gauge, views are at about 50% of what they used to be last year. And that goes for about every single established channel. Obviously, a channel who had five subs last year and 200k subs this year is going to be way up. But for all the channels who were about the same size as last year, all their views are down. Also important to note that subscriber acquisition is down. A lot of these big channels were averaging 30,000 subs a month, 50,000 subs a month. And now we're lucky if we get 10,000 in a month. 
personally, I used to average about 2,000 subs per day, and now I'm averaging like 200 or 300. It's scary. There is no more growth. For Twitch, views are a little bit harder to gauge. For me myself, Twitch views are way down. Probably at about 50% as well. I don't know if they're as bad as YouTube, but they're still down pretty badly. The Rainbow Six category as a whole normally has about less than 10,000 viewers. That wasn't the case a while ago. Pro League viewership is also somewhat hard to gauge, but anytime they have Twitch drops on, views are pretty decent. But the moment those drops are gone, viewership just plummets. Twitch drops reset at the end of each week. I believe it goes from Sunday to Saturday. I could be slightly wrong there. But for example, I would tune into the first Pro League match of a week, and it would have 80,000 viewers. And in that same week, I could go to Pro League at the very end on a Saturday, and it would have maybe 30,000, which just goes to show how inflated they are with drops. I'm not judging them for using drops. I think it's a good change. It just goes to show that the viewership isn't truly there. And one thing I want to address, because I get told this every single time, is that people have told me I shouldn't be blaming the game for my views going down, and that instead I should be looking at myself and what I can change. And I'm sure to a very small degree, they might be right. And if it were just my views, they would be completely right. But it's not. Everyone is having problems. I talk to a lot of creators all the time, and sometimes we'll be like, man, videos are killing it this week, everything's going back up, and then it's just right back down the next week. And even when we're excited about something killing it, it is so little to what we used to have. I am excited if I can break 10,000 views in an hour of a video going live. I used to be concerned if I had less than 20,000 views in the first hour of a video going live. It's just... It's not good, and it's very scary as a creator. We do not know what to do. But those are the numbers. Viewership is down. I don't know what else to tell you. However, viewership doesn't paint the whole picture. We also have search interest. People looking up Siege and trying to learn or watch stuff, whatever. Just overall looking up Siege. Unfortunately, overall interest is also down. Doesn't matter how you search it. It's generally down. Whether it's on Google or YouTube, it's down. I looked up Rainbow Six Siege, down. Looking up just Siege actually surprised me because it's actually on the up and up. And then I just scroll down a little bit and I realized that the reason why search traffic is so high for it is because a new movie from India came out called State of Siege Temple Attack and that is the top result when people look up just Siege. So just no one's really looking up anything Siege related anymore. Or at least not as much as before. Compared to about a year ago, most of the search results are down anywhere between 10 to 50%. And this topic of search interest actually feeds into the next category. The content that we're receiving. And it's also something that we talked about in the negative section that I said I wanted to flesh out here. We are receiving so much less content than we used to before, and that is just a fact. The devs like to argue with us on Twitter. They say that we're receiving more, or about the same amount of content as we did before. We even had one dev go so far as to say that us creators have selective memory if we think that Siege content has gone down. I wish that were the case, but it's just not. Maybe if you, you know, mess around with the numbers, the individual changes that you receive per season are probably around the same, but they aren't nearly as substantial. We used to receive mid-season reinforcements with huge meta swings, Huge balancing changes, operators being reworked all the time. Now we get something like Rook puts on his armor while he's putting it down. Which is still a good change, but there's just no substance there. People aren't going to come back to the game to put on Rook armor as they're putting it down. People aren't going to watch a video on that. It's just, it just doesn't make any sense. But what they will watch is having big changes. Glass getting a thermal scope. Gadgets being reworked, or operators receiving huge nerfs or buffs, those are substantial. Valkyrie getting priority on cameras, not substantial. Again, a good change, it's just not what we need. Which then this results in there's just less to be hyped about with each new season, and there's less for us to show off, which affects YouTube and also Twitch content creation. 
the standard interest levels were basically in a new season, seasons being three months, first month would be crazy. People would be watching everything, wanting to learn everything, and there was a lot for us to cover. And the second month, you'd normally see things slow down a bit. We covered everything that was new, we're covering new things as they're developing, but you know, it's been a whole month, not much has changed. So interest would overall die down a little bit. And then interest would ramp back up because then we'd have the test servers come out. People would want to see all the new things, all the new changes, interest ramps up, and then we repeat the cycle. So it'd normally be the middle month was kind of dead and the first and third month were actually pretty good. And now, unfortunately, at least with this new season and the season before it, the interest only lasted about one week or maybe two weeks for some people. It used to be consistent one month of every video beating the last one. They were always number one. And then now most of our videos are at the bottom of the leaderboard. And then unfortunately for this next part, I'm going to give kind of an opinion piece. But unfortunately, I think the worst is yet to come. Next season, we're going to have no map rework. Just a new operator. That's it. I'm sure we'll get other small changes with it. But no map rework is massively depressing. And the devs said themselves that it takes about a year, assuming everything goes perfectly, for something to go from an idea to be actually in-game. Meaning all the stuff that they did during lockdown is coming out in year 7, and also right now, which is why we might see so little content with next season. But if everything that was coming out for the next season was worked on a year ago when quarantines were starting to ramp up, that means the next few months after that, next few seasons, are just going to be super, super lackluster. Obviously, this is all speculation, but it just it doesn't look good for us. In a time where we need the devs to react and to ramp up what they're doing with Siege, we're probably going to see a ramp down instead. And the general rule is that it's a lot easier to hold people onto something than it is to bring them back to it. A lot of companies actually employ this, and it's why when you call to cancel your internet or your phone, it takes forever because they try so hard to keep you. It's easier to retain a customer than to bring them back. Once you've lost them, you've generally lost them for good. So I'm worried that with these next few seasons being super light, we're going to see a huge dip in interest in the game, and then good luck bringing them back. And unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever see Ubisoft ramp up to two operators per season again and a new map. At least from my understanding and how they phrased it in presentations, they are not planning on ever going back. Now, the last full category that we'll talk about, which is going to be incredibly opinionated, this will be less about facts and more about my personal frustrations, and something that we mentioned earlier, is the time to execute. Ubisoft has an incredible incredibly long track record of taking forever to change things. We had Ella who came out broken as shit, took them nine months to fix her. We had Lion who came out, was probably one of the most busted gadgets that has ever graced Siege, took them six months to fix him. Malusi who came out just last year in June of 2020, finally got reworked and balanced in June 2021. That is an average of nine months to fix an operator. If we're going to compare it to any other game, I don't think any other game takes that long. I have never personally seen that. I don't play a whole lot of other FPSs, so I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure most of them take on average anywhere between one to two months to fix something. And I understand. Siege is way more complex. There are way more moving parts. Destructibility affects a whole lot of things. Gadgets affects a whole lot of things. And I know it's easier said than done, but it's just, it's not acceptable for us to wait this long. I don't know what they need to do, but they need to fix it. I hate saying that because it makes me sound like a manager who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. But they have to fix it. And they also have to fix it really fucking fast. Battlefield 2042 is right around the corner. It's coming out in October. The population is already on the decline. They are looking for new shooters to play. If they don't implement a lot of changes within the next six months, it's probably going to be too late. We're probably going to see a huge, huge dip in players when Battlefield comes out. I know personally, as a content creator, I'm planning on making my channel half Battlefield or more if I can make it happen. I'm planning on 
trying to switch as much as I can to another game or to multiple games. And just like I mentioned the last point, it's going to be pretty hard to bring me back. Once I'm gone, I'm gone. And I'm sure a lot of the players in the community are going to follow suit. We had streamer mode that was announced in, I believe, mid-2020. I think it was between Season 2 and Season 3. It was announced then, and then it got released in Year 6 Season 1. And let me tell you, when it was announced to the content creators in our early capture, everyone was so excited for it. And then we actually got our hands on it, and we were like, wow, this is absolutely useless. It does absolutely nothing and helps no one. And Ubisoft was shocked to hear this, and then they just scrapped it. They told us that they were going to work on it to improve it, and that what they had as their release was not what they were hoping for. And then a few months later, they made a post saying, yeah, streamer mode isn't possible. They said the limitations with the engine just make it not possible. So my question is, why did they hype it up to be so much more than it was? Just to then later say, yeah, it's not possible. It just seems like Ubisoft does not know what they're trying to do. It takes them forever to execute it, and then when they do, they realize they did it wrong. If it's taking you close to a year to develop something as simple as a streamer mode, and you just don't realize where you've gone wrong then why is it taking you so long? It should be way quicker than that. And because of something as simple as this, with streamer mode just not coming out, we've had so many streamers leave the game. And now, I know this sounds really bad and sounds like I hate Ubisoft, but trust me, I don't. I sincerely do hope that Ubisoft changes this, but I just don't think they will. I do think it speaks to a larger core issue with Ubisoft. The employees themselves have essentially admitted that there are huge communication issues between teams and internally at the company. Fucking just about every post with any issue when it comes to Pro League, whether it's the teams, the packs, or anything, the head of the esports department, 4R6, has said plenty of times that there were miscommunications or he was unaware of something. The head of the esports department should not be having miscommunication or be missing out on things. I'm not saying that it's his fault. I'm saying that this seems to be a core issue with Ubisoft. And again, I don't have any fix for this. This is not something that I can really just solve. I admit it myself, but something has to be done. And if they don't, it's gonna be too late by the time they even do anything. But that's basically my rant for this video. This whole section is very passionate to me so i kept going and going and going but now that i've completed that that's basically all the information that i want to relay to you guys now we're going to actually try to answer the question again is siege dying personally i do think siege is currently in the process of dying however just because it's dying doesn't mean it can't be saved if the game was dead it would be beyond redemption Honestly, saving Siege is as simple as just Ubisoft acting fast, which they aren't known for. And personally, and unfortunately, I do believe that if Ubisoft does not revamp large portions of the game to fix these core issues, some of them that I mentioned, before Year 7 comes out, then the game probably won't survive all of Year 7. Or if it does manage to survive, the population of the community is going to be a small fraction of what it once was. And games can survive on small communities. They do it all the time. I don't think this game will ever die as much as Hyperscape did. Everyone remember that train wreck? That was horrible. But I do think it can go down to such a low level that as far as content creation goes, it would never be worth getting into. I sincerely hope that that's not the case. I don't want the game to die. I want to be able to make money playing this game. But as a creator, I have to be realistic and understand what is happening. I can't just sit here living in fantasy land and pretending that everything's okay and that nothing is wrong with the game. It's just not possible. I have a mortgage to pay. I have to look after myself. So I want Siege to live so that I can still do all that stuff. And I want Ubisoft to do well with it. But it just does not appear to be going anywhere but down. So yes, the game is dying in my opinion. It can be saved, but they have to do it now. And all I can really say is, let's just hope Ubisoft doesn't let us down again.